Yeah. All right, Aaron Torres of Fox Sports Radio joins us now to talk SEC at LSU Hoops. He joins us every single Monday. Aaron, how you doing? Well, guys, I'm doing okay. You know, I was actually wondering about that intro music. I was wondering, you know, <laughs> where are you guys? Where are you guys taking me on this? Yeah. So before you smooth Monday. before you came on, I, look, my my co-host Ronnie Rance, he played baseball for LSU. We call him Jumbo because he's six five. And he broke to us that one of his go-to karaoke songs, because he can sing, he sings the national anthem at different events, was Careless Whisper by Wham. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, I have no super strong feelings about it, but one, it, it definitely got me in the mood, maybe not necessarily to talk with <laughs> you guys. Right. <laughs> um, exactly. Two, okay, that's, uh, that's what you tried to do there, Ronnie. Yeah. I don't yeah, sing well, it on well, Monday nights, Aaron, if you know what I mean. It's a weekend yeah, song say, only. It definitely worked. I actually uh, texted my wife right in between before, I, uh, before you guys brought me in. But two, the new season of Narcos is out, and I was just catching up on the last season, and there is a scene where that song is prominently played. Wow. So it, it created a lot of emotions with inside me. That's okay. all I'm saying. All right. By the way, how is Narcos season two versus one? Because I'm about to get into it. Uh, I'm actually, uh, my wife and I, uh, when we're not listening to the song that you guys just played, yeah. We uh, we went through last season and we're through the almost through the tenth episode. So we will be starting it tonight because she does have okay. President's Day off. So this evening uh, we'll be catching up and starting season two. Okay, fair enough. Let's talk a little SEC and LSU hoops with Aaron. LSU fossed Alabama, and it was a game last week, Aaron, that we felt like was probably going to be a little tough for the Tigers to go on the road against Alabama. And Alabama needed the win. They absolutely had to have it to keep their NCAA tournament hopes alive and they get it and LSU fought back it was a little too little too late for them but they can't look in the rear view mirror because they've got Kentucky coming to town tomorrow 100 percent and it's funny because you know we've talked about this every time I've come on but the SEC is such a matchup based league this year and I will say Alabama while the win-loss record doesn't reflect it they really are a tough matchup. Yeah. I mean, listen, you got – yeah, you guys saw it. You don't need me to break down the numbers, but they shoot about as many threes as anybody in college basketball. It leads to games like they had Saturday where they get big leads, they fall behind by big margins, and yet it comes down always in the end to the final few minutes because either they get cold or somebody else gets hot or whatever. And so I bring all that up because they are a really tough stylistic kind of matchup Whereas Kentucky is very much a lot like uh, LSU. Doesn't mean that LSU has the advantage or the disadvantage or whatever, but they play three guards. They got a really good backcourt, a couple veteran guys like LSU. Really only one big guy that, that really contributes for them, Nick Richards. Again, a lot like LSU with Emmett Williams. So as weird as it sounds, because you think Alabama, you think Kentucky, but you can make the argument that just the way Alabama plays is a tougher matchup than what Kentucky will present tomorrow night at the PMAC. Obviously, it's a huge game for LSU because you win this game and then you're kind of right back to where you started because Auburn lost to Mizzou over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So you beat Kentucky, then you're going to have uh, another three-team loss in the SEC trying to fight for that regular season title. But after Kentucky, it doesn't get much easier because I think games at South Carolina and at Florida for LSU – are very difficult games. South Carolina, and I don't know why, Aaron, for some reason in the last two years, they just decide to have a couple of non-conference <laughs> losses that are just inexcusable, but they're back to yeah. where they, they were a year ago, playing really good in the SEC. It's going to be a tough game for the Tigers traveling to South Carolina as well. Such a spot-on analysis, Jacob, and it's really funny because, you know, I do a top 25 every week like a lot of people, and, you know, it's a real struggle to, this year, frankly, to get to 25 teams. There were a lot of teams like LSU that took losses over the weekend, whatever. Um, and, and South Carolina, I don't think, is really that far from being a team that they're on the bubble, maybe even way off the wrong side of the bubble. But a team that, based on how they're playing, I think you can make a case is playing uh, like a top 25 team right now. I'm with you, Jacob. I don't get some of these losses. I remember they lost to Stetson. I can't remember all of them off the top Boston of my head. Boston University was one of them, yeah. Who, who was it? Boston University. Not BC, Boston University. Yeah. There's no excuse for that. And so they dig themselves these incredible holes. But I think the number is six out of seven or five out of six or whatever. They did obviously uh, beat Kentucky at home a few weeks ago. And so I'm with you. I can't figure it out. But the one thing I will say about that team, 
They play hard every night. They're physical. They make you work for everything. And so I know that game's a few games away. I know it's a little bit in the uh, – you know, in the front, you know, in the front of the windshield there, but that is going to be a tough matchup, a team that you don't think when you think the SEC this year or most years, you don't think South Carolina, I'm a hundred percent with you though. They cause a lot of problems for a lot of teams. Visiting with Aaron Torres of, of Fox sports. All right. So every week kind of shuffle the deck and as of today, as of Monday after the weekend and what, how many SEC teams do you think are in at the moment? And when you look around the country, is this the year where truly anybody can win the, the national championship from a standpoint of if you're in the tournament and you're a, a, a top 10 seed, you, you have a chance? Is it that wide open? Yeah, well, with the first part, the SEC is wide open. There's still teams battling. I mean, the three at the top are in really good shape. Uh, I don't have all the information off the top of my head. I would assume Florida is probably in pretty good shape. thing with Florida, they have kind of a wild resume where they have really not a lot of great wins except for Auburn at home, but no, like, terrible losses in the computers. And the computers really are the only ones that matter, even though, say, a loss at Missouri looks really bad. Uh, I think Arkansas is probably still in by the, you know, threat of whatever – but they got to start winning games. They're pretty banged up right now, but that doesn't excuse a, I think they're four and seven or four and eight in SEC play. And if they don't turn around quick, they'll be on the way out. Mississippi State, man, just when you thought they were turning in the right direction, they lose at Ole Miss last week. So there's a lot of teams, um, you know, right on the cusp there. And then I would say on the flip side, I think it reflects to what you said, Ronnie, is it's wide open, which is why for these SEC teams, nobody is completely out of it because the bubble picture is wide open. In terms of the national title picture, what I'll say is what I say every year, and maybe this is the year I'm proven wrong. I think that, that historically we get surprise teams in the Final Four. Auburn last year, Loyola Chicago, George Mason, um, whatever. But when you look at the teams that have won it all, uh, you know, I went back and looked it up, and, and in the last 13 years, we've had 10 number one seeds win the NCAA tournament. Uh, two of the teams that didn't win it were my UConn Huskies in 2011 and 2014 when they had the best player in the tournament. And so I think, you know, we get, you know, making a Final Four confused with winning a national championship, and I think it speaks to the fact that, you know, people forget you get to the Final Four, you still got to win two more games once you get there. And so – I think it's wide open in terms of if you told me any number of 35, 40 teams is in Atlanta playing on that final weekend, I wouldn't be surprised if you told me that anything more than about eight or 10 at the top are winning the national championship, cutting down the nets on the final night of the season. That I would be a little bit surprised by. It's a great point you made because, yeah, we've had teams make runs and that shouldn't be there. And it's a nice story, but they don't win national championships. It's typically those one seeds. And if there's any team this year that has a feel of a complete team, it is the Baylor Bears because they can be sure. missing some of their pieces and they still run you out of the gym. They can be down in the first half and they just weather the storm and then they come out and they, and they beat you into the ground in the second half. It does seem like to me the class of the NCAA this year is Baylor and they're kind of alone right now. I mean, listen, guys, I don't know if you remember this day. Uh, remember the day that LSU, Joe Burrow went to Tuscaloosa, beat two. Uh, what was it, forty six, forty one? You remember that day? Yeah, it's a, that's a that. day that I think all of our listeners have circled <laughs> no and never forgot. Forget. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the reason I bring it up is because the last time that Baylor basketball lost a game was the day before that. It was that Friday wow. <laughs> night. That Friday night when Joe Burrow was yeah. sitting in his hotel room going over Alabama film or doing whatever he was doing. I don't know what he was doing, but that was the last time Baylor lost a basketball game. And so what I tell people, and I truly believe what you said is right, Jacob, they're the best team in the country, but it's because it's Baylor. If they were wearing Kansas uniforms with the exact same resume, we'd be talking about them as one of the top teams in the last five, six, seven, eight years. I mean, to go 23 and one, whatever they are, 11 and 0 in Big 12 play. They've already won at Texas Tech. They've already won at Kansas. They're just incredible, Jacob. And you're right. They do it on the offensive end. They do it on the defensive end. They're missing key pieces. They don't miss a beat. They're just absolutely phenomenal. I'll give them credit. By the way, I would add, 
there's only one national basketball writer that had them in the final four in the preseason. And you guys are talking to him right here. Hey, that's why we have you wow. on every single Monday. You know, our, our go-to well, basketball guy. Hey, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, wasn't that game a say. neutral site too? The game they lost to Washington? Yeah, it was, it was a neutral site game. It was actually one of those uh, armed forces games. They okay. played it on an Air Force base in Alaska. Right, so, okay. So, and I would also say, by the way, I, I like to brag that I had them in the Final Four in the preseason. I didn't have them doing this, man. And I didn't have, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I still had Michigan State, like most people, as the, the, the favorite to win it all in the preseason. I'd like to take credit and say I saw Baylor being 23-1 and one on February 18th or whatever today is, but I can't take that much credit. Who else did you have in the Final Four? Preseason. So I, had, I had Michigan State. And I really did believe in them. Uh, I had Louisville, who I'm souring on by the day, and I had Kentucky. I, you know, it's weird. Baylor was the one that looked weird. Now they're the one that looks like the for sure, like, you know, you look like a genius. But <laughs> what are you going to do? Hey, let me ask you this, Aaron, before we let you go. And you know we always appreciate your time. Out of the, the non-Power 5 basketball teams, I'm giving you Gonzaga, San Diego State, and I'm giving you Dayton. Which one makes it the farthest in the NCAA tournament? It's crazy. You know, listen, San Diego State is so weird because for a long time I thought entering the tournament undefeated would be a crutch, that the pressure would get to them. But I think because people just don't believe in them, I don't think it's going to impact them one way or the other. I keep waiting for them to fall off, and they just dominate. Um, you know, I have a buddy that was at Gonzaga's game on Saturday night, and he brought up some points to me that are concerning. They don't shoot foul shots well. Um, you know, there's issues with them. Listen, first of all, I'd say any three of those teams could be in the Final Four. It wouldn't surprise me. If you absolutely held a gun to my head, I would probably say Gonzaga – because the thing about Gonzaga, people don't realize. People say, oh, they don't play anybody in the preseason. They've made the second weekend of the tournament five straight years. Yeah. They're the only program in college basketball that's done that. Kentucky hasn't done it. Kansas hasn't done it. Duke hasn't done it. So history tells me they'll make it really far. Um, but I'm telling you, man, San Diego State can play. And, and, and I understand if you're a team that wants a number one seed and they may be in your way to getting it. I understand your frustration. But I would also say – Creighton is in second place in the Big East. They beat uh, Seton Hall the other day at Seton Hall, and San Diego State beat them by 30. Yeah. You know, San, you know, Kentucky loses to Utah in December. Two days later, San Diego State beats Utah by 30. Like, this team is so good. And if you're not competing with them for a number one seed, just sit back and enjoy watching them because they're really fun to watch. And even in their conference play, I realize it's not the who's who, but you know they're getting everybody's best shot every time they tip the ball off. And, yeah, they're going to have some close contests. And well, for – for Gonzaga, BYU is right there in the top 25, and they're in the West Coast Conference. So there's actually another team, and we know St. Mary's is always a team that fields a really good squad. Do I have a – yeah, I, I do I have a second here, Jake? I don't know if yeah, you got a break or not. Okay, I, I was going to say, first of all, the point about getting everybody's best shot is so on point. You know, I remember talking to Gonzaga guys last year, and, like, I get it. They get it. They get that, you know, they're not going through the gauntlet. Um, but when you go into everybody's arena, it's everybody's biggest game. It's no different than Kentucky basketball, Duke basketball, places that get 1,000 people one night will get 10,000 people the next night when Gonzaga's in town. So I, I think there's something to be said about that. And then the, the San Diego State point that they don't play anybody. You know, so, so for people who are kind of uninitiated, the, the NCAA tournament uses this thing called the net ranking, which is basically a computer model. And the best number, the best wins that you can have are what are called quad one wins. Well, San Diego State has the same number of quad one wins as Louisville this year and as Florida State this year. And so my only argument is, in a normal year, I get it. But the ACC is way down. The SEC, I think, after the first three teams, there's really tough games. But, like, you know, you get some, you get some layups, too, in that league. And so, like, my only argument, and I said this on my podcast the other day, is if you're going to tell me that San Diego State doesn't play anybody, you better be saying the same thing about Louisville and Florida State and a bunch of these other teams that play in these leagues that aren't as good as they've historically been because the, the, the computers are telling me that top to bottom, maybe it's not the same, but in terms of the best wins that San Diego State has, they match up pretty favorably with some of the teams that we consider to be quote-unquote better and quote-unquote better leagues. 
He's the man. He's Aaron Torres. You can follow him on Twitter at Aaron underscore Torres. Does a great job for Fox Sports Radio. He joins us every single Monday. Aaron, we appreciate your time, brother. No problem, guys. My wife appreciates you playing that music. <laughs> I'm going to go see her right now. Hey, You're yeah, welcome. There you go. Congratulations, Aaron. <laughs>